By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at an exciting match between Simbad the Librarian. This deck is so cool. It's blue, it's black, it's red. There's so many cool things happening. I can't wait to show you the deck photo. And that deck is pilot piloted by Victor. And he is taking on my deck, The Missing Link. So it's blue and white with spirit links and witch hunters and timmies. Anyway, a deck that I really enjoy playing as well. And this game was played in the reprint Masters, the second edition. So it's a tournament where we celebrate the reprint sets, fourth edition, Chronicles and Revise. And I think most of us have started in that era of magic, right? I personally started with Revised. I know a lot of people that enjoy the content on this channel started in the Revised 4th edition era. So that's kind of where this whole tournament idea came from. We just wanted to celebrate, you know, these sets. Now, if you want to know more about the specific rules, please check out the description below because there you can find information about the rules, but also a link to the tournament website. And there you can also find a rules page with a very extensive description of all the rules and in that same description below you can also find the timestamps because i know that some people enjoy skipping the deck tech section maybe going back to the deck tech after the actual match uh, the easiest way to do that is by using those timestamps there's a timestamp called mtg games click on there and it'll take you straight to the games and i'm now going to start with the deck deck of the deck of victor simbet the librarian let's have a look and here we see the deck of my opponent, Victor, and what a cool deck this is. So this is a reprint reanimator deck. I love it, right? So reanimator, the idea of it is that you get your big creatures into the graveyard as fast as you can, and then you reanimate them. So in this case, you use an animate deck to get them back. Or, of course, you use this very cool and funky artifact, Triassic Egg which is an artifact from Legends for to cast. It was reprinted in Chronicles 3 and tapped with a hatchling counter on the egg. Sacrifice the egg, choose one, activate only if there are two or more counters on the egg. You may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield or return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. I mean, this is so cool. You never see this card. So I think these are the two ways for for victor here to get his creatures back once they are in the graveyard and then of course the other question is well he also plays with recall so he can of course just get them then back into his hand but not directly into play so ideally you would use the egg or one of your anime deads and then of course the other question the other side of the deck is how do you get your fatties in the graveyard that fast well that is where he has jalem tomes so he's got two jalem tomes and he's also um playing with let me have a look of course with the simbat obviously so simbat is this really handy card from arabian nights you can tap it and then you can draw the top card of your library and if it's a basic land or just a land by the way if it's just a land card you can keep it if it's not a land card you got to discard it and put it in your graveyard and of course if he combines that with sylvan library he knows what cards he's got on top so for example if he has an elder dragon on top and an enemy dead in hand he can choose to activate his simbat draw the elder dragon because it's not a land he has to discard it put it in the bin and then play his anime dead and get it directly into play another really nice value play of course with simbat and sylvan is he can put his lands on the top and then he knows that he can draw those for free uh, with his simbat so then the simbat is just extra card draw in general simbat and sylvan is a great combination i love the fact here victor that you're just trying to do this yes it's inefficient yes you miss some of the key cards like bazaar of baghdad uh, oh, ho uh, Hollow's Eve, but who cares? You want to do something cool and you want to see, can I make a reprint reanimator deck? Can I make it work? I honestly, sincerely hope you can make it work. I want to see this deck do something cool against my deck. I also love the terror with the birthday cake altar on it. Please let me know in the comments below what the story behind that altar is. I also see some really nice signed cards there. The Nico Bolas is signed and also I see some... Uh, singleton zero point uh, trike there in your list as well which is really cool i know that you get that card if and please correct me if i'm wrong if you build a singleton deck that um, has the best result in a monthly tournament and has zero points and then you get a special price that you're the best zero point deck it's kind of like what we see in old school when you get a price for the best underpowered deck that's also what they do in singleton for the best zero point 
deck. I think it's really cool. Anyway, thank you so much, Victor, for bringing this to the table. And I feel super lucky that I have the honor to play against it with my deck, The Missing Link. Let's have a look. And here you see my deck, The Missing Link. So perhaps you're like, hey, I've seen this before on the channel. That's correct, because a few weeks ago, I also played with this deck in a uh, match proxies versus reprints and of course I was the reprint player but I actually made the deck for this tournament the reprint masters 2 and um, yeah the way this deck started was me wanting to play the protocol sorcerer and the spirit link together I thought it was just really cool enchant my Tim pick my opponent for one and gain a life it just seemed like a lot of value to me so then I started with white and blue and I have to confess once I started that route I just ended up with a lot of obvious choices Disenchant, Swords to Plowshares, Control Magic, Counter Spell, Brain Geyser. All these things are pretty obvious, right? But they're just so good. I couldn't ignore them. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to play with them. It's going to be a blue-white deck. It's going to be a little bit controly with some aggro elements. And then I thought, okay, um, if I have a Spirit Link, what kind of creatures go really well with the Spirit Link? And then I ended up with Surrender Perfreet and Sarah Angel. Surrender Perfreet goes really well with Spirit Link because, yeah, it deals the damage to me on my upkeep. If I have a Spirit Link on it, at least I don't take any damage from my own Afreet. Also, the Surrender Perfreet is a creature you play to go for it. You know, you want to turn it sideways and attack. So it's probably going to net me a lot of life. And then the Sarah Angel is perfect for Spirit Link because she can be uh, an attacker and a defender at the same time because she doesn't have to tap. So she can net me life as a defender and as an attacker. So I thought it was great. And then I looked at my list and I'm like... Oh, it's not very exciting and I thought okay the spirit links are cool the Tims are always cool but I want to add some more to it and then I ended up with witch hunter I think witch hunter is a really cool card it's a card from the dark um, it's a white card with the blue ability because you can tap it to deal one damage to your opponent which is kind of like a Tim right but then kind of limit it it's also a time elemental light because I can pay two white and I believe one tap it and then I can bounce target creature uh, that my opponent controls back to his or her hand and I thought, okay, that could be really annoying for my opponent once I have control. And also, it could be kind of good with my counter spell. And I think especially against uh, the deck of Victor, unfortunately, because Victor, I think your deck is so cool. I think your game plan is so cool. But I think, unfortunately for you, the Witch Hunter can be a huge pain in the ass. So those terrors and those bolts, throw them at my Witch Hunter. I completely understand. Because the problem here is, what if he manages to get his big fatty into the graveyard, uh, animates it with an animate dead... Or his egg and then they simply bounce it back to his hand so all that effort and trouble will then be you know it, it will be for nothing basically because the creature card is back in your hand it's not even back in the graveyard you know for you it's better if, if witch hunter could kill it actually then bounce it probably uh in most cases but anyway uh the witch hunter is going to be a huge problem for victor so victor i understand you're going to kill my witch hunter no worries i'm also kind of looking forward to seeing my witch hunter in action but i also want to see victor's deck work I think in this matchup, I am definitely the favorite just because I make more, you know, competitive choices, I guess. But still, I'm just hoping to see Victor do some really, really cool stuff and, uh, and have an exciting match. So let's go actually to the match. The Missing Link versus Simbat, the Librarian. Game number one of the Reprint Masters is about to start. Look at that, Victor taking a mulligan. I'm on the player starting with an island, so I'm playing my blue-white Missing Link deck, Spirit Links, Timmy's, Witch Hunters, and I'm taking on Victor with his Reprint Reanimator deck. It's blue, black, and green. He's starting with a Volcanic Island and a pass. I've got a City of Brass there and also a pass, so we're uh, starting quite slow, kind of what I was expecting. Maybe turn three, I can play out I Surrender Perfreet. There we see the pass by Victor. Ooh, he's not finding any lands, it seems. Neither am I also passing the turn. Finding a land from the top, so there's a bayou. So a bit of a slow start for the both of us. He's tapping two. There's a Sylvan. This is pretty good. Are we going to see a counter spell from my side? No, we're not. I'm just... Uh, Drawing a card for turn. For a moment there, I thought I wanted to counter because I grabbed my hand. I actually have to discard here. Ooh, that is tough. Throwing away a spirit link. This is really good news for Victor. So he can look at his top four cards, or sorry, top three cards now because of that Sylvan. 
He can put them in any order he wants to, and he can actually draw extra cards as well. Each extra card is gonna cost him four life, and he can draw up to two extra cards with the Sylvan. Looks like he's gonna draw one extra, so he's gonna drop to 16. If he can find a Simbat here, that will be golden for him. Simbat Sylvan is such a good strategy. There we see an underground sea. So he has no issues with the type of mana. Okay, there's a soul ring. This is quite good because of course he can also hard cost his stronger creature. So next turn he can start casting uh, some big fatties. There's a Jalem Tome. Again, a good card here for Victor. Also in combination with that Sylvan. And there we see a Tundra. So finally my third mana. Can I find a Surrender here? Taking a damage, gonna drop to 19. Okay, there's a Surrender Afrit. So a 3-4 Flyer. Originally from the Arabian Nights, it's going to deal one point of damage to me during my upkeep and I'm passing the turn. Let's see if Victor can find an answer or simply just play out a huge flyer himself. Remember, he is playing with the Elder Dragons. Needs some more mana though to make it work, but he's getting closer and closer. Already has five mana there on the board and all the colors he needs. It's going to be very interesting to see what he can do this turn. Gonna put two cards back, so just drawing the ones. Who's gonna stay uh, on 16 here? Gonna play a bad lance. Wonder what he's gonna do here. If he can cast like a huge creature, he's playing with Shivan Dragon, for example. He could cast Shivan Dragon. Tapping the two for the Soul Ring. Wonder what he's gonna do with those two mana. Could use it to activate his Jalem Tome, but it looks like he wants to do something else with it. A little bit in the tank here, it seems, trying to figure out what he wants to do with his mana. Tapping five here. Playing Solkanar, the Swamp King. That's a good one, a five five that has Swamp Walk, and whenever there is a black spell being played, the owner gains a life. So I'm taking a damage, by the way, from my own Surrendip. So yeah, that's a problem. Would be great for me if I can find a land and, uh, or am I just gonna play a Swords here? I want to say possibly play a Control Magic, but there's Swords to Plowshares taking care of Solkanar, but that's actually not that bad for Victor because he's gonna gain five life, gonna go up to 21. And look at that, I'm taking a damage and I'm playing a Spirit Link here on my Surrendip attacking. So that means I'm dealing three points of damage to victory. He's gonna drop to 18 and I'm gonna gain three. I'm gonna go back up to 20. And there's a pass. It does mean though that I had to tap out or at least tap uh, my City of Breath. So I only have one blue untapped. So I don't have uh, the ability to play a counter spell or at least pretend to have a counter spell in hand. So let's see what Victor can do. We're going to look at the top three cards again because of the Sylvan. I have five cards in hand. Victor has five cards in hand as well. So there we see another Volcanic. Can he play out another big fat creature? And again, Swords is a really bad card for Victor because it removes the creature from the game. And of course, Victor playing Reanimator, he wants his creatures to go to the graveyard. So again, it's a bit of a, a mismatch for Victor here. Again, counting his mana. What is he going to do? Oh yeah, play a Terror. That makes sense. So this is that two for one that I was a little bit afraid of, but at least I could get some life. I could get a little bit of value out of that Spirit Link in the previous turn. It got me back up to 20, but now my Surrendip is gone. going to play a new one though. Drop to 19, surrender number two, hitting the board in a pass. And there we see a Jalem activation. The cool thing here is that Victor knows what's on top of his library because of the Sylvan. And look at that, a Vivictus Asmadi, an Elder Dragon in the bin of Victor. Can he play an anime deck to get it back? And this is really cool to see. It's just cool to see Victor's deck doing what it's supposed to do because this is exactly how he wants to use the Jalem Tome in combination with the Sylvan. He wants to kind of manipulate what he puts in the bin, when he puts it in the bin, what he's going to do with that. So I'm expecting him to play an anime dead here on his Vivictus Esmadi. There's a tropical island first. And this would be a huge problem for me because I don't have counter magic up. And remember, it's a 7-7 seven, seven flying. I mean, it, it's not a little 3-3 three, three creature. Looks like he's going to use his Jalem Tome first. 
Draw for turn. Again, he knows what to draw because of his Sylvan. Going to put another Sylvan in the bin. Does he have an animate? He does not. Ooh, I'm very lucky here. So basically, he just used the Jalo to kind of cycle through his deck a little bit faster, trying to find that animate dead. And I'm in a hurry here, of course, dealing three damage to Victor, putting him on 14. And uh, there we see Victor just, uh, exactly, he can look at the top three for a moment there. It looked like he was just going to draw one card. But again, he can look at the top three because of the Sylvan. Probably desperately looking for an animate. If he finds an animate, that would be ideal. I mean, a terror would be nice as well. He can just take care of the surrender on my side. He's still on 14. He's got some time. And I'm kind of torn here in between two emotions. On one hand, I want to win. On the other hand, I want to see this Vivictus Asmadi hit the battlefield. That would just be absolutely epic. So we just have to wait and see what Victor is going to do here. He's really uh, in the driver's seat. Again, I do have counter magic open though. So it's going to be a little bit risky for Victor. And he's just going to pass the turn. So he's giving me some more time. I'm going to drop to 17. I can attack for 3, put Victor on 7. Ooh, it looks like Victor wants to do something. Are we going to see another terror? There's the other terror. Can I counter it? No. I cannot or I don't want to. There is another Serendip though. Wow. Serendip number three. So it looks like I'm not finding any mana, but at least I'm finding a lot of Serendip Afrites. That is very unfortunate for Victor here. Then again, at least it's not, you know, a Sarah Angel later in the game. But still, it must be annoying here for Victor. So he's going to try to find maybe more Terrors. Or that animate that that I've been talking about now for a couple of uh, turns. And Victor discarding here one of his lands. And looking at the top three again. What could he do? Drawing a card for turn, just the one. Makes sense because again he can, you know, cycle through his deck with the Jalum Tome Sylvan combination. Are we going to see another terror here? A regrowth. Okay, who could get back a terror? What is he getting back there? Was it a Vivictus Asmadi? It went so quick, I couldn't see. Was it Vivictus? Is he going to hard cast the Vivictus? Wow, that would be such a boss move. I mean, the responsible thing to do is... A terror and just wait for your anime dead to draw into it but this is way way cooler look at this Vivictus Asmadi hit take the board my man Victor I love this man 7-7 seven, seven, powerhouse and I am a little bit worried guys because I'm just worried I'm just gonna play a sword so I can keep attacking with the Serendip oh no yeah yeah I can't for some reason I thought this was what was going to happen. That's a problem when you play against these, these blue white decks. They just have a lot of answers. At least Victor is going to gain seven life. And again, the Vivictus is removed from the game because of Swords to Plowshares. But at least Victor, you got to play it, man. It was super cool. Going down to 14. Two cards in hand. Going to look at the top three again. I mean, he is getting a lot of value, you know, a lot of card selection, I should say, going on with that Sylvan Jalum. So that's really working well. And because I'm also giving him lots of life with the swords, you know, my attacks with the Surrender don't have a huge impact on him. I mean, look at my life total. I'm actually on 15 and, and he is on 14. So it's only one life apart, despite the fact that I've been attacking nonstop. And there we see a Birds of Paradise from the side of Victor. Okay, finding another land finally, because I've been stuck on three lands forever. Attacking here. I wonder what we're going to see. Another terror. Counterspell. This time on the terror. And it's a terror with the birthday cake. I kind of talked about that one in the deck deck. I'd love to hear the story behind that, Victor. Let me know in the comments below. There's the attack. And he's dropping to 11. Drawing a card and discarding a card. Already knowing that that was the drop. You could see that. Just took it off. Put it directly into the bin. There is a disenchant on the Sylvan. Ooh, that is problematic for Victor. I mean, it's 
Yeah, it's kind of because that was his value engine. Jalen Tome, Sylvan, possibly a Simbat in the future. That was going to really help him. Sylvan is so good for Victor. And of course, it's a great target for my disenchant. I mean, Jalen Tome, also an interesting target for the disenchant. But I went for the card selection. Let me know in the comments what you would have done, Jalem Tome or Sylvan Library. And we see eight lands, nine mana actually, if you because he also had the Bird of Paradise. So he's got nine mana still. And he's playing with some fat, big creatures, right? And I'm actually pointing out my life total. I'm saying, listen, Victor, yes, I've been attacking you nonstop and I have all the answers, but look at my life total. I'm on 13, you're on 11. We're not that far apart. And uh, untapping now for turn. He's not playing anything, though. That is unfortunate for Victor that he cannot find more of his bigger creatures because he now has the mana to hardcast them. And there's a Spirit Link again and attacking with my Serendip. So I wonder what Victor's going to do here if he wants to chump. On the one hand, he's got more than enough mana. On the other hand, why would you chump now? You're still on 11. Yeah, it looks like he's going to jump. I, mean, I get it. I get it. So I'm going to go back up to 15 here. And then he's going to play a bolt. Oh, I think he's making a mistake here. I was going to play a bolt on my life total. Okay. Going to put me on 12. I think I would have maybe kept a bolt. Maybe he made a mistake, thought that my surrender had a toughness of 3 instead of 4. Or maybe there's something going on in his hand. Perhaps he's got a Wheel of Fortune. That could be. That could be the reason. Interesting. I mean, a Wheel would be great for Victor, actually, because I think his hand is... is, is I think he's got two cards in hand, I believe. Not quite sure. Okay, he's first going to use the Jail. I'm going to draw for turn. Going to discard... Ooh, discarding the Simba. That card would have been so good earlier in the game. Okay, tapping three. Are we going to see the wheel? No, another Jalem. I really expected a Wheel of Fortune here. I guess the Jalem is good too. He can just go through his deck faster and faster, finding the cards he needs. Discarding a Bad Lance and a Pass Turn. I mean, he already played out three Terrors, I believe. And his uh, regrowth. There's an attack. So probably Victor going to drop to 8. I'm going to go back up to 15. Tap 3. Are we going to see a Witch Hunter? A Tim. Okay. A Prodigal Sorcerer here. And of course I can tap the Tim to deal 1 damage to any target. But not yet. It still has Summoning Sickness. He's getting used to his environment. And Victor on 8 here. Going to use the Jalem Tome to draw and discard. I mean, he's got 2. He can Tome as much as he pleases. Ooh, actually discard. I'm not sure. Well, I mean, he's going to deal damage to himself. But just that Earthquake for 1 to take care of the Tim. Because that extra point of damage means he's on a 2-turn clock instead of a 3-turn clock. Ooh, also putting away the bolt here. Interesting. I wonder what those two cards in his hand are. Perhaps he finally found an anime dead. But there are not really targets in there because of those sorts to plowshares. That is the big problem for Victor. If he could have, you know... He can, of course, get a surrender back from my side. The problem for Victor is that deals one damage to him as well. Okay, there's a bolt. So he had another bolt in hand. So then I understand why he discarded those other cards. Yeah, it's dif I mean, it's difficult for Victor when you're kind of with your back against the wall because, of course, he could have played a double bolt then, I guess. But we don't know what that one card is that he's keeping in his hand. I'm now on 18. Victor dropping to 5. And I'm finding another land. So finally, I've got 5 lands. I wonder if I'm going to play a Sarah Angel here. Tapping 5, taking 2 damage. Going to drop to 13. To 18, actually. Oh, 16. Okay. 
I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm on 16, just to clarify. Anyway, here is the Sarah Angel. So my Sarah can kill Victor next turn, and um, it's looking bad. I think for Victor in this match, I mean, he, he got the time that he needed, but he just couldn't find the cards in the right order. And also the problem for him are those sorts to plowshares removing his creatures. Oh, Nico Bolas in the bin. I love this. Does he have an animate? Can he animate Nico Bolas? That would be so cool. Victor, you got to do it, man. You got to do it, Victor. Then you've played Vivicta Sasmati and a Nico Bolas in the same game. That would be... That would just be amazing, fantastic, epic. I don't know what else, but do it. Tapping one, tapping the two. Are we going to see an animate? Animate that. I love it. Nicole Bolas, the man himself, hitting the table. This is fantastic. And he's on five still. I mean, this, this could be good. I'm going to drop to 15. Do need to take the damage, though. Or do I have a control magic here to take him over and then win the game? Yep, there's the control magic. There's the control magic. And then I can win game number one. Now, the good news is that we have game number two and three still to come. And I must say, Victor, I am loving your deck. Let's quickly shuffle up, sideboard, and go to game number two. Game number two, here we go. Now, the good news is that we have Victor on the play. Hopefully he doesn't have to take a mulligan. And uh, let's just hope for the best. Okay, look at that. I'm actually starting, so I guess Victor chose to be on the draw instead. Maybe that's better for him with a reanimator deck. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. It looks like I've also taken a mulligan, by the way. So that means I started with six cards. And uh, let's see what Victor can do here. Playing another duel, tapping both. And there's the Simbat. Okay. Are we going to see a counter spell? We're going to see a counter spell on the Simbat. Okay, so I'm understanding the threat of the Simbat here. And five cards in hand with the past turn. So didn't find land number three. Remember, I also had mana issues in game one. I don't think, I just think it's bad luck. I think the mana base of the deck is quite, quite okay, actually, quite good. Maybe too many mana because I'm also playing with uh, the Felwer Stones. Anyway, Victor here playing a Tropical Island and a Pass. And there is land number three. And again, the Serendips. So early pressure from my side. Again, finding the Serendip, just like I did in game number one. And that is a tough creature to deal with for Victor here. And look at Victor's mana base. He doesn't have access to black. So even if he has a Terra in hand, he cannot play it out. So I'm going to need to take a damage here. Going to drop to 19. And then, of course, I assume I'm going to attack him for three. So I'm going to put Victor on 17 in that case. Yeah, so finally changing my life total here. Five cards in hand. I'm on 19, attacking for three. Victor going to drop to 17, and it looks like I'm passing the turn. And Victor, they're drawing a card for turn. Finding a Volcanic Island. No black yet for him, though. Volcanic Island, Taiga, and Tropical Island on the board, but no Underground Sea, for example, or Badlands, so no access or Bayou, no access to black mana. Going to take another damage, drop to 18, attack Victor, probably going to drop to 14 here. Tap two, what am I going to do? There's a Felwer Stone. Okay, that's actually kind of nice. I'm hoping that I can at least cast a Witch Hunter in this match. But then I need two white, though. I don't have two white yet. Let's first see what Victor can do. Can he find maybe land number six? Play Sheevan? That would be kind of cool. A trike would be pretty good as well. Just some pressure on the board would be nice. He's also playing with the Mahamoti Jin, I believe. Just a pass, though, for Victor. Going to drop to 17. Probably just going to attack him again. I mean, my Serendip is doing so much work. Also finding land number 5. Playing a Spirit Link again on my Serendip. Attacking Victor here. Going to put him on 11. 
Are we maybe going to see a double bolt here? There's the first bolt. No response from my side. One bolt is fine, but two bolts. Am I going to play a counter spell? Oh, that is unfortunate. Victor really needed this, these bolts to go through here. But I had a counter spell back up. I'm going to go back up to 20 because of that spirit link. Victor's going to drop to 11. That is, of course, why that Serenip is so good, that four toughness. I don't think that Victor plays with Psionic Blast. Actually, you cannot play with Psionic Blast in this format because it's only 4th edition revised and Chronicles here in the Reprint Masters. So no access to um, Psionic Blast here. Tapping 3. Wheel of Fortune. I'm loving this. Gonna lose three cards. Disenchant Brain Geyser. Ooh, that was good. And another Surrender. Also a very good card. Mind Twist Animate. Oh, Sheevan in hand. Sheevan was in his hand, but he couldn't find that other land. And also he had an Animate in hand. Wow, he had a pretty good hand, but he was just missing that one piece to the puzzle. And now he's drawing seven new cards. There we see at least... Uh, a black source. Are we going to see a terror now? There's an animate that. Oh, I'm loving this. What can he get back? He's got trike. I, I think I would go for the Sheevan, right? Exactly. Sheevan dragon hitting the board. It's a 4-5 now because of the animate. Because it gives minus 1, minus 0. Oh. But it's still really big. And more. the most important thing for Victor here is it can stop my Surrender. Because my Surrender has done a lot of work this game. Put Victor from 20 all the way down to 9. Ooh, do I have a control magic? Probably boarded in some control magic from the side. I do. Uh, I feel kind of dirty looking back at this match. I mean, I'm so sorry, Victor. You're doing all the all the cool stuff, and I'm just wrecking it with these these efficient cards like control magic and swords to plowshares and counter spell. Anyway, passing the turn. Let's see what Victor can do. It's also tough for him to get with those colors to get rid of the control magic because yes, he could, for example, play a Tranquility, but then he also destroys his own animate. Tapping two. What is he gonna do for two mana? Are we going to see a regrowth Sylvan Library? Maybe it's nice to note, by the way, that in the Timmy Talks tournaments, because Reprint Masters 2 is a tournament that I organized for the patrons and channel members, um, each game gives you a point. So even if you're two games behind, if you can win that third game, so you lose 2-1, you still get a point. So then I would get two points, and Victor, in this case, if he could win uh, game number three, he gets a point. So even after this game, we will be playing a game number three, but let's first see what's going to happen here. I mean, he's on 8. He's still kind of alive. He played Sylvan. Okay, there's a Birds of Paradise, which is actually uh, important for Victor because he can use it to chump block. And remember, my Felwer Stone can make red. So that means that I can give my Sheevan Dragon plus 1, plus 0 oh with the Felwer Stone. It looks like he's going to do something else. Also playing a Brain Geyser here. I understand this play from Victor. I mean, you got to do it now. There's, there's no time. You just got to try to do whatever you can do. Because maybe, you know, he can jump block with the bird. That will give him one more turn, you know. And then the magic has to happen, right? Then he's got to take over the game. So I understand this brain geyser. Attacking here with both. And what I wanted to say is I can use my Felwer Stone to make my Sheevan Dragon a 5-5. And then it could uh, deal 8 damage in total. So this is understandable. This jump block here with the Birds of Paradise on the Sheevan Dragon of Victor. Tapping three here, and there is a Timmy, a Prodigal Sorcerer. And look at my life total. It's going really hard with that Spirit Link on the Serendip. I mean, I'm on 21 already. Victor looking at the top three cards. He kind of needs a Miracle. I mean, he needs a Balance, but he's not playing with it. He needs a Wrath, but he's not playing with it. I mean, I don't think there's really a good card for Victor at this point. An Elder Dragon would be cool. There's a Jalem Tome. Could he maybe use the Jalem to drop a big creature in the bin, then animate it? It's kind of a line of play that he could try. 
So he's used his Jaloom, still has to discard a card, so let's see what it's going to be. And no, it looks it's all over. He's grabbing the cards. He didn't find what he was looking for. And yeah, it's, it's really tough because yes, after sideboarding, Victor can put some good cards in, like the Gloom, for example, and, you know, an extra Terror, which are really good against my deck. But remember, I can put extra an extra Control Magic in, for example, which is so good against Victor's deck, you know, just... You could see that in this game. I played that Control Magic on Shivan, and that was kind of the nail in the coffin for him. But don't go away yet because we do have a game number three. So we're going to shuffle up here and let's see what, uh, what our decks will do in game number three. Game number three. Here we go. And let's see if Victor can still get a point from this matchup. So he's allowed me to go first again. Preferring to be on the draw with his deck. Playing a Tundra here and pass turn. I mean, problem is when you allow me to go on the play that I have access to counter magic faster. Are we going to see that counter magic, by the way? Are we going to see counter spell on the Sylvan? No, we're not. Okay, that's good. Victor playing that Sylvan. And do I have another Serendip again? I don't. It's a Prodigal Sorcerer. Okay, so it's a bit more of a mellow start from my side. Maybe that can offer Victor a little bit of an opening. I mean, you can look at the top three, which is always nice to do. I'm gonna take one card, so it's gonna stay on 20. Play out a bad lance. Tapping three here. There's a gloom. Okay, that's pretty good. That means I cannot play out my, you know, white removal cards for now. I need more mana to do that. Remember, gloom gives you attacks of three. So I guess I could play out a, a Swords, passing the turn here. I can, of course, start pinging Victor now. So he's on a 20 turn clock. And it looks like he's just going to take one card again. So he's going to stay on 20. There is another Bayou, tapping three. There's a Jalem Tome. I wonder what else he can do here. There's just a pass. So there's going to be a ping, of course, from uh, my side on end step. And there's the bolt. I'm going to protect my Tim. Oh, there is a blue elemental blast protecting my Tim. Got to do what you got to do, people. Keep the Tim alive. So uh, Victor is on 19. And actually for Victor, I think he also wants to kill the Tim because the Tim can, of course, kill his Simbat. Which is a really good creature. But if, uh, if Victor can try to find a trike, I mean, that would be perfect against all those one ones in my deck. Remember, I play a play set of Protocol Sorcerers and two Witch Hunters. Unfortunately, we haven't seen the Witch Hunters yet. Let's see what Victor can do here. There's a Taiga. I mean, I do feel that in the games so far, Victor has really managed to kind of get some kind of card draw, card selection engine going. So that side of the deck is working quite well. I think the problem is just all the answers in, in blue and white, you know, the disenchants, the swords, the control magics. That is really what's breaking Victor up here. There are Nico Bolas in the bin, loving it. I am loving it. Finding three cards, well, looking at the top three cards, I should say, because of the Sylvan again. Trying to find probably that anime dead. I mean, he's got to do what the deck has to do. And of course, yes, maybe I have a Disenchant or maybe I have a Counterspell. At least the Elder Dragons are not a very good target for me to, to steal with Control Magic. Tapping six. Ooh, he's hard casting a Sheevan Dragon. That is pretty sweet. And uh, pinging Victor on end step here is going to drop to 17. But that Sheevan Dragon is on the board. Am I going to steal it again? Oh, I'm going to steal it again. I feel so bad. 
I mean, I'm kind of happy because I own a Shivan and I want to attack with a Shivan, but I, I, feel, I feel like a bad guy in the movie, you know? The villain, the villain, that's the word I'm looking for. I feel like a villain in a Superman movie. Let's see if Victor can do anything back here. I mean, if not, it's going to be a short game. I mean, Victor could play an anime dead here on his Nico Bolas. That would be absolutely a killer move. He is tapping three, though, so animates only two. So there's a Tranquility. Ooh, Tranquility coming into the board. It is, again, destroying some of the enchantments of Victor, but it is giving back the Shivan Dragon. I am liking this. I mean, it's a price to pay for Victor, losing the Sylvan and losing the Gloom. But I understand because he gets the Sheevan back. And more importantly, I lose the Sheevan. There is a Birds of Paradise. Still has mana open for the, uh, the Jalem. And I'm killing the bird. I probably would have kept the bird in hand. And maybe, maybe Victor forgot about the Tim for a moment. I would have kept the bird in hand because you can then discard to the Jalem Tome for the card selection. And he's got enough mana anyway. There's a Spirit Link on the Sheevan. So that's bad news. Now, do remember with Spirit Link, you first take the damage and then you get the life. So if for some reason, Victor can deal 20 damage in one go with the Sheevan, I die before I get the life back from Spirit Link. So maybe later in the game when I'm on a lower life total, this could be relevant. For now though, it just means that he cannot really use the Sheevan. I'm on 20 still, Victor is on 17. Let's see what he can do, tapping. Three again. There's another Tranquility. Ho oh, ho! I mean, Tranquility is a good card against me. The problem, of course, with Victor is that it's also a good card against himself. Uh, but I love this. Attacking here with the Shivan, And he can pump it to eight. There we go. Putting me on 12. Ay, 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 ay. I'm in trouble here, ladies and gentlemen. Putting Victor on 16 with the Tim. I mean, the Tim's doing work. He's done four damage so far. That's pretty impressive for my Tim. But that Sheevan, that dragon is a problem. Tapping for another control magic. Oh, another control magic. Like I said, after sideboarding, I'm probably playing with three or maybe even four control magics. Passing the turn here. This is very unfortunate for Victor. I mean, he found the Tranquilities. He played them out. I understand that play, getting rid of that, of that Spirit Link. That makes sense. I mean, you're not going to wait. Tapping six. Oh, Ma Moti Jin. Wow, man. Victor is spicing it up here. I'm loving it. Playing a Ma Moti. Putting him on 15 with my Tim. And I'm attacking here, offering him the trade. I think I would take it for Victor. It's a good trade because you want your creatures in the bin. He's playing with the anime deck. He is thinking maybe about taking the damage and then attacking me and putting me on seven. That could be an option. Interesting. I think I would have taken the trade. Then again, I don't know what he has in hand. He only has one card in hand. Playing another Tim. Drawing for turn. I mean, he's not going to attack now, is he? Because, you know, he's on 10. He's going to go to eight. He's going to know he's going to go to 9, then take 2 from Tim's, go to 7, then an attack, he's dead. Look at that, he's attacking. But there we see a Swords to Plowshares. That's the problem, you know, the Swords, the Disenchants, the Control Magic. It's just too much to deal with creature threats. And this is, of course, uh, a problem in old school magic. And yes, there are ways to work around it, but in this matchup, it's, it's not really working out. But I do love... Uh, seeing the deck of Victor in action. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful deck. It's not over though. I mean, he's still on 15. Drawing a card there, discarding his bad lance. Still has four untapped lands to do something. So next turn, he's in for quite a lot of damage if he lets me untap with the achievement. I've got two City of Brasses, so I can pump it to seven. There's a Bolt, probably on one of the Tims. And then probably the one with Summoning Sickness. There's a Terror. Okay, okay, okay.
okay. I have to admit, Victor, I mean, you keep bouncing back. It's really cool to see. Okay, I guess it no longer had summoning sickness then, so I was able to ping. Or wait, he, of course, kept the, the Tim on the, the board that didn't have uh, summoning sickness anymore. Sorry, guys. Anyway, ping him for one, putting him in 14, drawing a card and passing the turn. And that was a good turn for Victor getting rid of a Tim and a Sheevan. Again, what he needs is, um, is an animate because I'm going to run out of control magic. So I only have two cards in hand. So at a certain point, his creature is going to stick, you know. Tapping three, there's a Surrender Pafrit. And those Surrenders have also been really good against Victor. So I'm on 12, Victor's on 13. I can ping him to 12 on end step. Victor activating his J-Loan, discarding his Tropical Island. He's got four untapped. I assume he doesn't have an animator, or else he would have gotten his Nico Bolas back. Tapping three here. Okay, there's a Mind Twist. This is good. Counterspell on the Mind Twist. Still, it's a good Mind Twist because I'm losing a Counterspell. Putting him on 12 here with the Tim. Taking a damage. Going to drop to 11 myself. Two cards in hand. Turn the Surrender sideways, putting Victor on 9. And I'm liking this game number 3 so far. It's very swingy. With two cards in hand, looks like I'm going to do something in second main. Tapping three. There's another Surrendip. Ooh, that is pretty tough. Means six damage next turn. Surrendip damage. Able to put him on eight. Attack him for six. Put him on two. Ah, oh, that's going to be really tough. I'm on 11 myself, so I'm going to drop to nine as well. I actually can't remember if Victor has Fireballs or Disintegrates in his deck. They seem to be quite good when I'm hurting myself so much. Discarding an underground sea here, playing a Birds of Paradise. Okay, so the birds I can, of course, kill with Tim, but still, it's going to soak up a point of damage. So that's something. I'm going to take two points, going to drop to nine, going to draw for turn. Probably going to deal six, going to put him on three. Ooh, there's a terror on one of them. That is pretty good. So he's going to... Go to six instead of three. That makes a big difference. Two cards in hand. Looks like no action in my second main. Just a pass turn. I'm on nine. Victor is on six. Ooh, he's looking at, looking at his graveyard. Does he have an anime dead? That would be so cool. Animate. 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 Tapping! What are we going to see? Animate that! Or are we going to see Nico Bolas? Oh, Vivictus Asmadi. And he also cool. Also cool. 7-7 seven, seven powerhouse. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm on 5. I mean, I can, I can ping him to, to 5 on end step. That's what I'm doing. Putting him on 5. I'm going to drop to 8. Oh, that's Vivictus Asmadi. Playing a Sol Ring. For a moment, I thought I was going to play a Swords again, but playing a Sol Ring. What can I do here? I'm passing the turn. Victor's untapping with Vivictus Asmadi. Now he's going to pay the upkeep cost for this huge Elder Dragon, and then he's going to hit it. He's going to turn it sideways. He's going to try to hit me in the face, deal seven damage. Of course, I have to Trump Block then, but let's first see... He's paying for upkeep cost. Oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. Turn it sideways. Do it. I mean, he's got it. I'm on eight. I have to block or I'm dead, right? So he knows I'm going to block. He's got a card in hand there. Does he have? No, there's, of course, no Berserk in the deck because, again, it's only reprints. I mean, it's a 6-7, though, because of the animate. 
So he's not attacking with it. Is that because it's a 6-7? But he can pump it up, right? Am I missing something? Anyway, he's keeping it on guarding duty. Took a damage from my Tim, so he's on 5. I think I would have attacked with it, but maybe I'm missing something. Because I believe you can pump the Vivictus Asmati. And you could deal 7 damage, and I take a damage from my own Surrender, but perhaps I'm missing something. Anyway, let's take a look what I'm going to do. Another Surrender! Oh! That is a problem for Victor. That double Surrender is, is a big problem for him. Because that means that next turn I, I can win it, because he can only block one. Drawing a card, I believe I saw a Simbat there, discarding the Simbat. This is a problem for Victor. Paying for the Asmadi, of course, and drawing for turn. What can he do here? So close. So close to winning this game number three, and yet so, so far away. Next turn, he is dead, unless he can find something to change the tide. Ooh, that would have been quite good against that Tim. Playing a Taiga. Does he have another anime to maybe get back the trike? Looks like he doesn't. Is this the end of the road for Victor? And his deck, Simbat the Librarian. Look at that tapping. Turning my Tim sideways, it seems. Or no, he wants to do something. He is going to attack with the Asmati. And why not? I understand, man. You want to turn it sideways. If you lose, lose in style. Turn the Elder Dragon sideways. And there we see a Simbat. And now, of course, I'm going to put him on four. Then I can attack him, put him on one. And then I can use my Tim again. And, uh, and yeah, kill him, kill him with my Tim, which is, of course, what I love to do. But I have to say, Victor, all the props goes to you and your very cool deck. And maybe it's nice to note that Victor actually won the flavor prize. Every Tim he talks tournament, there's a flavor prize and the uh, players can vote on their favorite deck. And Simbet the Library got the most flavor votes. So he won a Knight's nice Altered card. And um, congratulations for that, Victor. I think well earned. And if you want to see all the other decks that played in the uh, Reprint Masters 2, check out the description below because there you will find a link to the tournament website. And that was the match for today. So I hope you've liked it. We have more action from the Reprint Masters 2 coming next week. So keep an eye on the channel if you like this format. We will be showing you games all the way up to the finals. And before you go, I'd like to ask you to subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet and ring that bell. And now that you've done that, please take a moment to hit that like button, leave a comment, share this on your socials. All these things are completely free and it really helps the channel move forward. And then there is a last thing that you can do and that is join Timmy Talks as a patron. How can you do that? It's very simple. Patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Check out that website and there you can see how you can support the channel. It already starts for $1 a month. And the cool thing is, for that $1, you can join in tournaments like this one, and you also get access to the Timmy Talks Discord server, and your name is mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every video, including this one. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Somebody can see.